Yeah. So we have number one, we do have eyewitnesses. Where are we? Gospel out. of John and Gospel of Matthew and Luke. Luke. We'll get to that in a minute. But I'm making a claim. I'm making a claim that we have eyewitnesses. Yeah. Right. You can debunk it in a minute. Let me make the claim. Right. Secondly, you have multiple evidences. Josephus, a Jewish historian, said that Jesus died under Pontius Pilate around about 90 AD, and we have. A Roman historian right about 90 AD said that Jesus died. Now, we have eyewitnesses and we have evidences outside the Bible that he died. Would you agree with that or disagree with that? I'm sure a lot of people existed and their names are written down. But what I'm interested in is get to the point where he rose from the dead and broke the laws of oh, we, 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 We'll get to that, but what the thing, what the problem is with the skeptics, if you look at the history of skepticism and you read the books of the atheists like Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, and, uh, and Christopher Hitchens, if you read their books, what you'll find, and even their best debaters like Richard Carrier, they're not very good on historical Jesus studies. They're always behind the time. They never keep up with modern scholarship. And modern scholarship has realized that the Gospels are based on eyewitness material. And, and, and the skeptics don't like to hear about this or talk about it, right? So my plank, that's why Dominic Crossan, who is a skeptic, said that Jesus dying on the cross is one of the most well-attested facts in ancient history. So we've got the plank of the cross. Now let's get to the resurrection. The guy who died. A guy who's like a politician and spoke and said some wise stuff died. So do you contest that he died or not on a cross? I mean, if it's so you're yielding to my evidence. You're yielding to the data that I've given you. We will grant you that. You will grant me that. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of evidence. A little bit of evidence of the resurrection. Right. Right. Here's, here's the little evidence for the resurrection. In the time of Jesus, woman's testimony was only worth half that of a man. Right. If you were going to start a new religion in the time of Jesus, you would not use women. Because women in Judaism, testimony in the law course was only worth half that of a man. Now who were the first people to testify that they saw Jesus? Was it men or was it women? That's not true. <laughs> was it men or women? I don't care. I don't care. I mean, it's not true. Was it men or women? I don't know, you tell me. It was women, sir. Right, but the fact that women's word was not as important as a man in the eyes of people at the time is true. It's only the proof that they could have found the Roman soldier. That's the word. Right, they're great. Well, it was yeah. the women. It was testified. It was testified. It was announced. Now, the point what I'm getting at is that first of all. Right? Well, you give me a natural explanation. I'm giving you a supernatural explanation why the resurrection happened from the women, right? Not with me. So now you give me, you've got to counter that with a natural explanation why the women were the first to see Jesus and why the early church used women. And guess what? In the early church, for the first 300 years, women were flocking to Christianity because of this. Could you explain to me why it was women when women wasn't worth anything in the course of Judaism? Can you explain it, it, to me? It's not something I'm interested in explaining in the interest of proving it wrong. I mean, that, what you're describing is just, you know, it was a backward time and they had a war. That's not proof. You're, you're pointing out it like some kind of proof that a supernatural thing happened that broke the laws of nature. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you evidence and a, a natural thing happened. Women. It's conjecture, can, it's not evidence. Can, can I can I say it? Joining dots that I'm not, I'm not, have absolutely I'm nothing not, not, to do I'm with It's really good evidence. It's really good evidence. Even atheists like when he was an atheist answer he flew would say it was good evidence. It's good evidence. You've got to give a natural explanation for the fact that women testified to Jesus. If you can't do that, my evidence stands as evidence for the resurrection. Here's what's wrong though. You are, you are taking for red that everything you have described thus far is a historically accurate thing. You know, it's not a record of history. You already acknowledge, my friend here, and you acknowledge that my scholarship about testimony, you both acknowledge, you both acknowledge that my scholarship, my scholarship on eyewitness testimony that I brought up, I can give you a book, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses by Richard Balcom. 
you testified to the scholarship. I didn't give you the name of the scholar, right? Yeah. So I've already, I've, al I've already paved the way. I've already given the solid ground for my position. Appreciate you, man. That's all That's all the homie. Okay. All right. Let's get back. Let me get back to this, right? If you were to die tonight, what would happen to you? Oh. So you, what would happen to you, do you think, if you died tonight? What would happen to me? Yeah. I would start to paint. Right. So, you think, you know, like Hitler and German mouth, when they die, they just decay. Yeah. So they're never sure. going to get judged or take it to account for what they've done. How possibly you know what happens after you die based on what's in that book? That's okay. Insane. But without the book, without the book, I'll explain to you. Have you heard of Immanuel Kant? Uh, yeah. Immanuel Kant came up with the idea of the categorical imperative and he reasoned from reason that there was a law, a moral law and he reasoned because there's moral law we lived in a moral universe and because he reasoned from moral law to moral universe he then reasoned that there must be a, a judgment day. Okay. That, wait, wait, wait a minute. That was a man who didn't use his Bible but used reason and philosophy. The Bible says we, we are creatures who are moral and accountable and we live in a moral universe. So like for example, if we do wrong, there's going to be consequences for that and, and we have law courts that deal with that. Okay, so keep it there. Keep it there. Let, let's just finish. Let's no, no, I just want to jump on that. So Emmanuel Kant said that there's uh, an internal moral law and you're using that as some kind of proof that this, this all sort of ties in. Well, how come then when you go geographically and far enough, what's right in one place becomes completely wrong in another place and what is taken as red is just a part of everyday life in one place is soon as we get punished for it, we're in jail in another place. So that disproves any kind of internal moral law. You just go 5,000 miles east or west of here. Everything's in a completely different way. Well, let's, go, let's go thousands of miles, thousands of years away. Have you heard of Salon? No, no, so you have to respond now. I'm responding. Okay. I'm responding. Have so, you heard of Salon? So how come the moral law changes inside different people? How come it's different? It, every culture that you go to, everywhere you go to, there is a moral law. It might be expressed in a different way from you. If you read the Book of the Dead of the Egyptians, right? There's still in that in that Book of the Dead. Uh, adultery that they didn't like uh, a man sleeping with a wife or the wife's you know they had a sense of moral responsibility what about homosexuality do you think that it's okay for a man to sex with another man so why have you changed that to that because I think that's absolutely fine and I, now, I think that now you're going to refer to your book and say that you're not really into that Right. So that disproves the internal moral law that's in, in all of us that somehow makes us feel all right. So we've moved, we've moved to a different topic now. Alright? Sure. What do, you think yeah. about, what do you think about homosexuality? Well, totally put to that. But my point was... So that you, don't, you don't like homosexuality? Because get, of what's written now? Don't be so you're being, to be intolerant? Right. Don't, be, don't be personal. No, I'm, I'm pointing don't, at your book. Don't, don't be personal. Because that's where you're getting your erroneous beliefs. Is, let me ask you something. Is, is, you? Let me ask you something. Is there such thing as right and wrong? Are the moral absolutes? It's relative to every single individual. So why are you getting upset with me then? Because you're trying to say that we've all got this internal moral law yeah. that's the same. But wait a minute, wait a minute. You're contradicting yourself. You're saying that there's no moral absolutes, but you're getting upset with me because I believe that homosexuality is wrong according to the Bible. But if you don't believe in moral absolutes, that's my opinion, and you have a different opinion. You can't prove my opinion. You believe in moral absolutes. No, but your belief... I'm just proving you, not me. Let me finish. Let me finish the argument, and then you come in. All right? Keep it cool. Take a chill pill. Let's just enjoy the day, yeah? Okay. All right? Because you're a cool guy, and I'm a cool guy. No, you don't like gay people. You're cool. Just chill. 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 Let's go through you're this. You're invited to better parties if you're friends with gay people. Just chill. Just chill. 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 Let's chill. There's no moral absolutes. That's what you said. Right? Right. Now you're getting upset with me because I believe in moral absolutes. Mm -hmm. Right? When you say this word. Let me finish, let me finish. And then I'll let you speak. You say there's no moral absolutes, but you get upset with me because I believe in moral absolutes. But consistency in your belief should be you have a belief that there are no moral absolutes. And that means you should let me believe what I want to believe and you shouldn't even question me because there's no moral absolute so you don't have a right to question me let me finish let me finish you don't have a right to question me because there's no moral absolute but wait let me finish that's one but the fact that you're questioning me is you're saying there are no moral absolutes but you're now becoming a fascist and exercising 
a moral absolute on me without any argument. Fascist. One here. Yeah. Wow. Do you know why? Do you know why? Tell me. Because I wasn't emotional and getting upset with you. Right? I am talking to you in a rational way. And you have to defeat my position from rationalism, not emotion. So now you're diverting away from the fact that you can't defend your position on moral absolutes, or the fact that you completely groundlessly think homosexuality is wrong. You're now diverting it over and, and becoming at home and saying, I shouldn't be arguing with you in the first place. No, no. No, now what you've done is you switched it to ad hominem. You've gone from emotion to ad hominem, attacking me as a person. I, I, yeah, because because you dealt with it emotionally rather than intellectually, and that's what a lot of gay people do. Rather than actually debate in it intellectually or rationally, they get upset and go homophobic, and that's no good. You've got to rationally argue your case. Now, I tell me, no moral absolutes. God bless you. God bless you. You're saying there's no moral absolutes and you're getting upset with me because I believe in moral absolutes. Consistency demands that if you don't believe in moral absolutes, you shouldn't get upset with me because there are no moral absolutes. So I am I am right to believe what I want to believe. What's no moral absolutes. What does moral absolutes have the to do with The moment you question me, you believe in moral absolutes. No one's trying to stop you from... from now you're changing. Go on. No one's trying to stop you from, you know, standing here and saying something. We're in a place of free speech, so we enjoy coming down here and, you know, debating these things out. But there are things that you are... Will you shake my head? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're all friends. But there are things that you are, you know, willing to stand up there and say, like, homosexuality is wrong. But it's, it's all based on this, this sad little book that was written, you know, thousands of years ago. It's, it's not a historical document. It's been translated, you know, more than a dozen times. It, things have been cut out of it. People with agendas have had access to it and put in passages, okay. you know, and, and you're basing your hatred of a whole group of people on this completely pointless Okay. Okay, number one, you said hey to the people. Have you ever seen me any hate anybody down here, bro? No. Have I been talking to uh, people? Not had any hate, right? This is a thing that a lot of people will say that we hate uh, gay people. That's not true. Jesus said, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. If you're my friend, do the same. A Christian should have love, not hate. So that's an ad hominem against Christians. That's political correctness spinning the ideology onto Christianity and Christians and making them feel intimidated that they can't believe what the book says. Secondly, you attack the Bible. Let me ask you this. Have you ever heard of Bart Ehrman? No. Have you ever heard of uh, Kruger? No. Have you ever heard of Bruce Metzler? No. These are the leading scholars in the things that you were saying would say about the Bible, some would say it, for it, against it. But those are the leading scholars. When you're coming to me, you're not coming to me, Lynn. And I'm going to calm down here because I'm going to let you save face. Right? I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you save face. I'm not going to go any further. Okay. Right? Because this is my topic. This is, this is the scholarship that I, I come with. And I'm not going to bring it and embarrass you. Right? Let's just keep it. At, at, what I was going to do, I was going to bring in books and scholars and debunk what he said. But I'm not going to do it because this guy is a nice guy. He's a sincere guy, even though he's coming. And I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to treat you with respect. I'm not going to get you on camera and, and, and humiliate you. It's fine. I don't, well, I don't need right? your pity. No, uh, no, no, no. Mercy. Yeah. I, I want to just... No. I want to just talk about the Bible. The Bible says that it's a sin. Jesus loved you and died for you on that cross. And if you want that message of salvation, it's there for you. If you say it's hate, if you don't believe it, that's up to you. Yeah? If you want me to give you scholarship to prove the Bible has not changed and it is, I can give it you right now. You want me to defend Christianity intellectually, I can do it right now. Can you give me an ethical defense for telling homosexuals that they need to stop what they're doing? Yeah, the Bible. Where? Yeah. The Bible. The Bible. Point proven. It's God, God, God's word. Point proven. God's word. That's, that's where the buck stops with people who, who are religious. Like, they, 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 there's no there's nothing to back up your belief. And, you know, you, I want you to do what you're going to do. what you're going to do. He now wants you to do it. No, so you know what we're to do. <laughs> that's, that's what I okay. say. Okay, okay. Sure, okay. Sure. So you've not read Bart Ehrman. You've not read Bruce Metzler. You're saying the Bible's a load of rubbish. But it's quite clear that you're not in any shape or form equipped 
from a scholarly opinion to tackle the Bible and say it's not inspired and it's changed and all. You said, what did you say about the Bible before? I can't remember. You said something about it, it it's been changed. Why that book or why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Times yeah. And have you ever read Bart Ehrman? No. Right. Have you ever read no, Bruce Benson? I haven't read any of the So all I'm showing you is you're making claims you've not read the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're making the classical uh, academic mistake of thinking that because you've read enough books on it, then you have some kind of ethical authority. I want you to give me an ethical, yeah. stage by stage argument, and not just say because it's in the Bible. No, no because you. I want well, you to give me an ethical. Wait, 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 no, no, I want you to give me an ethical wait, wait, wait. description of why homosexuality what? is wrong. Let me finish. I said on the basis of the Bible, you debunked the Bible and said the Bible is not the word of God. In, in, not in that word, but general speaking, right? I'm saying I can provide evidence to show that the book's been preserved because he was saying it hasn't been preserved. I can give you the scholarship. And what came to light in this discussion is you not engaged in that scholarship. So I can teach you, I can teach you and I can show you, but if you're not willing to be open about it, and you're just going to say, give me an ethical argument, but you're not willing to engage in, in the scholarship, then I don't want to embarrass you. If you want me to embarrass you, I'll embarrass you. Okay, so I would say to that, the, the problem that you're going to slam into with every single atheist is that we, we don't believe that, there's so many stages that we don't believe in that. I mean, we don't believe that someone heard the voice of God and then wrote it down. We don't believe in prophecies, we think they're all false. We don't believe that that has survived the way that it was, you know, even if it was true, even if there was like some word of God, uh, you know, we, we don't believe that there's too much unreliable evidence in there. Right. And so you're never going to get an atheist to believe in that. So we want an ethical description here on earth. Right. You want an ethical description. Right. But how, if you want an ethical description, have you heard of the is for distinction? Uh, right. If you're an atheist, one of the great problems with atheists, when you're asking me for an ethical argument for, for, for morality against homosexuality, is the Bible says it's wrong, right? There is all distinction. There's a guy called David Hume, a philosopher, and he said that nature does not tell you what's right and wrong. That's the is. Is is nature. Ought is what you do. Now, if you believe in evolution, if you're an atheist, then you believe in evolution, which I assume you would do, and you're rooting your morality on nature, that is the is, and it doesn't tell you what the ought is. It is impossible for an atheist to break free and to deal with the is-ought distinction. You cannot ask me for an ethical reason when you cannot even conjure up any morality or ethics from the is or distinction. So answer, so deal with that. If you're going to ask me a question, it's got to be coherent. Of course, yeah. So the is or distinction, um, you know, I like it, but I don't follow it as a narrative that you take your, your impetus from nature as to what's right and wrong. I use pleasure and pain. So, and you know, you know, through your, your empathy as a human being, that if you have these masters of pleasure and pain, if something feels bad to you, you don't do it to other people. And if something feels good to you, you can do it to other people because morality is all about other people. It's not about what you think, it's about your impact on other people. So I would say that my impact on other people as far as homosexuality goes is that if people want to be gay, that's fine. You know, they're not hurting me, they're not hurting anybody who, who doesn't want to engage in it. So there's absolutely nothing wrong based on my pleasure pain okay. system. Okay, your pleasure pain system is still rooted in evolution. And in evolution and in nature, nature what a goldfish does is not the same as what an ape does. What an ape does is not what the same as a human being. There is no one morality. There is no one absolute. And you said at the beginning there's no moral absolute, and now you're using pleasure and pain as a moral absolute. There's no moral absolutes between people. Everyone has their own ethical comparative that they yes. have to follow. But if, if you talk to someone long enough, you will disagree on a moral topic with anybody, no matter how much you think you agree with them. So you have to find your own rules to live by. And my system is based on my impact on other people and pleasure and pain within that system. Yeah. But what I'm saying is your foundation, I talked to an atheist about four years ago, three years ago, he was using the same arguments as you, and I brought up to him the, the is not distinction, and he left atheism. He's not become a Christian, but he realized the, the implication. You cannot talk, when you're talking about pleasure pain principle, nowhere in nature, whether you talk about pleasure pain principle, is anything right or wrong. You can't do it. From a, listen, listen. From an 
is nature. You cannot get all. It's just your personal opinion. And if you think pleasure pain is the right way to go, then somebody else, and you know, you know if you do a search for the Japanese and what makes the Japanese happy, it's not the same as what makes an English person happy. It isn't the same. If you do a study, a sociological study, so what makes you happy and what your pleasure pain is doesn't necessarily mean it's somebody else's. Okay? The, the, no the, the, the Bible is not in the is or distinction because God is the is and God is the ought. We're not in nature, we're in the supernatural. Alright? So I can say that God tells you in his law and you're made in his image that you're a moral being that it's wrong according to the word of God and it also tells you that in your own conscience in the Bible that you know what's right and wrong now I didn't bring up homosexuality I didn't bring up homosexuality yeah the lady brought you up here today and you brought it up my message here today and the reason why I've come all the way down to Manchester is not to find some gay person and go <laughs> or anything like that and be homophobic my job today is to come down and preach the, the gospel. And I really believe in my heart, I really do, bro, and you're a nice person. I really believe that there's a heaven and a hell and that we can know God and have a relationship with God. And I want to save you from that fire. And God has given us ten commandments. Don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Honor, honor your father and mother. No, right? Honor your father and mother. Don't have any other gods before me. Don't use the name of God in vain. God's given the commandments, and if you lie, if you lie, what does that make you? Uh, what if I lie with another man? Okay. No, if you lie, if you lie. If you lie, um, I mean... How many lies have you done? You'd have to, I mean... How many lies have you done? Thousands, probably. So what does that make you? A liar? Right, now assume, just assume, on my behalf, just assume, for argument's sake, does a God and you meet God, what's he gonna do with the lion? I would just kill it as a god. Just assume, put yourself in my shoes. And then he's gonna be like you and have like human emotions like anger and resentment just and he's assume. gonna be just assume. I would ask him why he made me the way I was to lie. Why he made me and why he made uh, cancer and why he made genocide, uh, why he made bone disease, you know, why he why is he so vengeful and spiteful and then he's you know he killed his own son, he's yeah. he's love. Do you, ever, do you ever get angry at Father Christmas? No. Have you ever gone up to when Father Christmas is there? Have you ever gone? I've had enough for you. You, you, ooh, I've, ooh, you are homophobic. Have you ever done that to Father Christmas? It's a funny image, but I can't no, say I've done no. So why are you getting angry at God and why are you getting angry at the Bible if you don't exist? What about his question that he just asked you? It's really Wait, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. So why? I'm, I'm, why? I'm getting angry because you just gave me a chance to say to God something. And what I would say is, why are you such a self-important, you know, he's a tosser. God's a tosser. But he why likes killing angry? people. He, he like doesn't exist. And, so why get angry at it? Because you asked me to assume for a second that you did exist. Yeah. And so hypothetically I said what I would have said, so I, I did you a grace. So, no, 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 no. That anger is just more than hypothetical. There's something deep down in you, you're angry Stop and you know... Stop going at and address the question. You know why you're angry? Stop deflecting. You know why you're angry? Because you know it's true. No. I, yeah. Sorry, since no, the Bible tells you it's true. I he's angry, and I could be wrong, my brother. I, could, I think he's angry because people, millions and millions and millions of people are believing what you're saying. Just off the cuff that God thinks this, God thinks that, God said this, and there's no evidence for what you're saying, apart from what you but believe the evidence. it's not real, why get angry, bro? Sorry? Because, do you ever go to Father it's Christmas? It's about something happening to do you, do, you, do you ever go to Father Christmas again? Really, no, no, honestly, come no, on, no, man. No, 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 Christmas, you're not really no, no, you're ad hominem me. No. Chill out, chill out. I'm chill, but I'm You don't get angry at Father Christmas, but you no. get angry a God who doesn't no, exist. No, not a God. Because the get, Bible I get, I get upset with the, the things that people who believe in God believe. Have you what they life? do. Of course I've lied. How many times have you lied? Pro you know what? Probably can't even remember. If you meet God tonight, yeah. um, and you've been lying, what's going to happen to you? If I believe, if I meet your God? Yeah. Or my, my interpretation the of what you mean. Biblical God, the living oh, with God. That God. Well, if I meet that God, I'll have a few words to say to you. Right. If he exists, I'll have a few so, words to say. A good so, question like so, this, brother. So, are you God? 
and my God, in a spiritual sense, I could say that everything is so, God. So, everything. so you're saying that everything's God? I'm saying, yeah, 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 I, yeah. and I can prove yeah. it here. So it I made, can prove it here. So how did, on a level. how did nature make itself? How did nature, this is a good question. How did the Big Bang happen? How did anything happen? No, we're on about Where, nature. We're no, no, about okay, nature. I understand where you're coming from, but I'm saying that when you, when you believe that what you're seeing is the reality of things, that's the first problem I find with people. It, my point is this, if I say to you what are you made up of, you, you, you'll say to me, well, atoms, molecules, blah, 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 everything's made up of that stuff. And we know that atoms are made up of 99.9 .9 empty space, and even that the uh, nucleus within that is, is made up of empty space. So what is making everything real? What is making everything solid? These are the questions that other religions, other spiritual thoughts and concepts, they, they, they try to discover, whether it's the Egyptians or whatever. They've all searched for the answers to these questions. Now what's happened with religion is being made so basic and black and white that this is this and that is that, and that there is right and wrong, there's good and bad, up and down. Duality. We are living in a dualistic experience okay. where right and wrong seems to appear to be real. Right. But beyond all that, asking you and me and this gentleman and this sister and whoever what we are, that's a completely different question. And the journey you'll go on to discover the answers is a lifelong journey. I've, I've heard what you said. Thank you. I'll give you the Christian position. Yes. We believe in a Trinitarian God, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yeah. and that God is relational. And we're made in the image of God to be relational. And there is a difference between us and his image in the person than physical atoms, as it were, right? Or matter, right? And so God made us in his image to have a relationship with him. What is his image, can, can, brother? Can, can, what is his can, image? Can, 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 it, it's personal. It's a personal relationship, right? Hang on, no, no. Let, in, let in, me finish. Let me okay, finish. but answer that question. But, yeah, what is his the image? image? The image, when he says God made us in his image, God is a, per, is a personal relation of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Within the Godhead, within the Trinity, is love. And it, we are made in that image to be relational. And so Christ came down to bring us into relationship and to fulfill that relationship of love by dying for us and bringing it to the redemption for us. So when you said, and I respect what you said, and uh, I don't fully understand everything because you, you'd have to sit me down for an hour to unpack what you're saying because I don't know what you're saying, okay. you know. But if everything is, is God, right, there's a question about this personal relationship that we know who we have a relationship with. It's i.e. different from nature. It's a personal God, a Trinitarian God. I agree. And Christ agree. came down, but who, who was one with the Father and, re and revealed, he said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. I'm so familiar with this. So, 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 so can I just finish this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what, what <clears throat> I would answer to you, is that it's about this relationship about with Christ. You? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Your conscience. Now yeah. you ask me if I lied. Have you lied? You lied? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now your conscience. Is your gauge, right? Your conscience is the thing that allows yes. you to say, well, we can allow that one, sweep that one under the rug. Yeah. Or some things are just so majorly right, big that you've got to, you know, get them out in the, out in the open. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is your conscience is connected to what the part that you're talking about, that relationship. Yeah, yeah. That relationship is with yourself, is with your higher right, nature. Is with that part of you that yeah. is on a journey of the self-discovery. Yeah. Yeah. And self-discovery journeys are always about being better, for a better word. Better, growing, growth, spiritual expansion, conscious expansion. Now your religions and all religions have them aspects in them, but what they do, they get locked down in the I am. I am bad, I am wrong, I am this, and that my, my father or creator, it's always a man by the way, a mouth, is, is, is like watching and judging. Now, listen, I'm a father, yeah? I've got two beautiful children. Now, my children, sometimes they make total mistakes, they've got to learn things and all that. But even when they do things, you know, they come back to me, and I'm just, a, in the eyes of religion, I'm just an immortal. And if I have that unconditional sense of love towards them, you know, that I will forgive them literally anything, doesn't mean to say that they won't have to pay karmically for everything they do. But still, I still love them in that sense, yeah? What I'm saying to you is that we seem to have much more ability and capability to love than this God, whether it's coming from Christianity, Islam, 
uh, the, Jew, the Jewish God. They're, they're so full of vengeance and anger and hate that they, they, they kill people, they judge people. Jesus Christ said, there's no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. Yeah, but did he yeah, say let, that? Let, just didn't, let, no, excuse let, me, excuse not, me, excuse you're me. You're not being fair. You've come all the way from no, Manchester. No, no, you've, right. you've not been fair. No, no, I Take have, a turn. Let me I know, but no, you had a lot to say. You had a lot to say. Let me, there, let, me, let me finish. Right, let me finish right. and be honest. I give you the respect to listen to you. Right? You are on about, first of all, you were on about, we go to this black and white. Religion's black and white, and we're not to be black and white. When you're saying that, you're being black and white. It's called postmodernism. Post Let me finish. Postmodern says that there's no right and wrong, and anybody who says there's right and wrong is wrong. Well, they've made the mistake. That, that is a mistake. They, they've that made the mistake. mistake. That is a mistake. Of, of what is called modernism. That there is a right and wrong. Okay. Right. Okay. So you can't get out of it. So when you say religion is black and white, you're actually doing the same. You're no, doing no, the black and white. Right? Yeah, Se yeah, second sorry, point. Second point is that. No, I, if you look at Jesus Christ, he went to the lepers, he went to those who were outcasts. But did he, bro? Let, did he? I mean, that's another question. How do we know this? Let me, let me finish. Jesus Christ went to the lost sheep. He went to the broken eye. There was a woman, she spent all she had on physicians and she, she was lost and she touched him and she was healed. There was the prostitute who was, was brought to him and they were going to stone her and he forgave her. There were lepers who were cast out, who, who were nobodies in society. And he went to them. But above all, he went to that cross. 